What if I tell you that there's a tool that looks and feels like Cobalt Strike, but is completely free? I was just casually scrolling LinkedIn the other day when I came across a post. Cobalt Strike for free? It definitely had my attention. So it turns out Mr. Eric was raving about a new C2 framework called Adaptix. I had to click on the GitHub link, open the docs, and things got very interesting. Is Adaptix C2 really the new free alternative Cobalt Strike? Let's find out. For those that are new to the world of C2s, Cobalt Strike is for many the gold standard for red teamers. It's for adversary simulation to simulate real world attacks on networks. See, it has this thing called Beacon, which is for all intents and purposes, the payload that runs on target machines and is how you get your reverse shell connection back to your Cobalt Strike client. It's got some super sick features, but this video is not about Cobalt Strike. However, you can think of Cobalt Strike as a Ferrari of C2 frameworks. That's why when I see somebody claim that Adaptic C2 is essentially Cobalt Strike for free, you best believe the first thing I'm gonna do is give that baby a test drive. The name is also cool. It sounds like some kind of transformer or adhesive glue or something that Bear Grylls would have come up with if he was naming a C2. The project is also open source, so you can find the code on the GitHub and follow the installation instructions from the Gitbook. We'll link these links down below in the description. All credit must go to the great man behind this project, Hacker Ralph. A big thank you from Clint and myself for developing this awesome tool. Adaptix is not shy when it comes to features. The client GUI is written in Golang and C++ and QT, so that makes it cross-platform. The UI has a nice dark mode theme that is very similar to Cobalt Strike, so it gets a thumbs up from me. Now let's talk about the server. Communications are encrypted. It treats listeners and agents as plugins or extenders in their lingo, meaning that it is modular. You can add new transport methods or agents easily. And get this, it's got buff support, as in beacon object files. Those little in-memory modules that Cobalt Strike's famous beacon uses for extended functionality. So BOF support in an open source free tool is really sick. Mr. Bobby Cook, the creator of Loki C2, also just implemented this functionality in Loki. So the red teaming C2 market is really heating up now, which is awesome to see. If you guys want to check out the video that we did on Loki C2, It'll be linked down below as well. Now, before we get into the demo, please note that this is for educational purposes only. Please don't use any of the techniques shown in this video for malicious activity. This is only to showcase the capabilities of this new C2 open source free tool. So the first thing we wanna do is get clone the Adaptix uh, GitHub. So there'll be a link to the GitHub in the description. I'm just following along the installation instructions from the Gitbook now. So I'm just installing the dependencies that are needed for it. So that would be the pre-install part to build the server and extender. You need to install additional dependencies. Please note that Golang 1.23 is required to compile and run the Adaptix server. So as you can see on screen now, I've just started uh, installing that. And then after you've done that, you'll just need to install sudo apt make, cmake, and then lib ssl, all of those things, qt6 base, dev, qt6 websocket, as in the documentation. And now I'm just gonna run a make command to create the dist directory, and then to start building the Adaptix client and the Adaptix server. So if you get these errors on screen, they're just warnings, so don't worry. It's not erroring and it's not gonna break. Uh, so you can just continue the, the build. It does take quite a while. I have sped up uh, the recording this at this part so that it doesn't take that long. But uh, there is a few warnings that I get on my machine, <clears throat> but not to worry. Cool, and then there's 100%. So the CXX executable has now been installed for the Adaptix client. Um, so now we need to install the extenders. So basically the listeners, so Beacon, SMB, TCP, Gopher, those sorts of things. And then it also builds the agents. So the agents are those beacons that we were talking about before. And then Gopher there. So there we've built the listeners now. So the HTTP and TCP. And now we're gonna make a SSL certification. So, I mean, an SSL certificate, not a certification. So we just use the open SSL command as per the documentation because we need one when we run the server um, with our profile. 
Cool, and you don't need to really put anything in there for country, name, state, or province, all of that good stuff. And then I'm just gonna copy that into the dist uh, directory so that I can run it all from the same directory. So now to run the server, I'm just gonna run a adaptic server profile and then the, the default profile.json. So just a quick note that the password for that is pass, it's in the JSON file, so you could just cat it out if you wanted to check that out. Um, so as you can see, I'm now connecting to the client. So the user is Simon. You can put any user for there. The password is the password that's in the profile.json. And then I'm just connecting locally, so 000. And then the port is the one that's also in the profile.json file, as is the endpoint. So I just put all of that good stuff in there. And as you can see, we now have the Adaptix client loaded. The GUI is running. So as you can see, Simon connected to the team server and we are in the test profile, the one that we made when we connected with the client. Cool, so in the settings, you can change the font, the dark mode if you want. So I'm a bit blind, so I'm gonna increase the font to about 12 there and then restart the client. So you can just reconnect like that's pretty easy, awesome. So I really like the, the UI UX design. I think it's quite sleek and cool. And then you can go to the listeners tab and create a listener. So we'll just create a little basic HTTP listener on localhost, so 0.0.0. I'm quickly gonna get my IP address, which is the 192.168.1. It's my natted VMware IP address there. And I'm gonna be on the callback address on that. And then you can just specify any URR and then don't use SSL and make sure you have a listener name. So HTTP is gonna be my listener name. Cool, so we created that now. As you can see there, you gotta go right click on it now to generate an agent. So the agent is the beacon that we're gonna be using to get our payload and then obviously transfer that to our victim machine, which in this case will be Clint's Windows machine in the clintonsire.local domain. If you guys wanna see how to set up an Active Directory domain, we'll have that video in the description as well. Cool, so I just got a Python web server running to to host my executable file. And now on Clint's machine, I'm just visiting that that uh, Python web file. And then you see there's no OPSEC or no obfuscation being done here. So we do get prompted by Microsoft Windows Smart Screen that this file is a bit shady, but we're just gonna tell it to ignore that because for the demonstration, we just wanna see how Adaptix works and we're not using trying to evade EDR or defend or anything. So as you can see, we get the callback now and now I'm on the graphical uh, listener page. So pretty much showing you the layout of how it looks, so how Clint is connecting back now. And the commands you can start with is help. So this is before we've installed any beacon object files or anything. So these are the commands that come shipped standard with Adaptix. So you have cat, you have copy, you have download, execute, all that good stuff, sleep, uh, print working directory. So you can see there we executed that and it told us we're in Clint's downloads directory, which is where the file was. Cool. So you can also go to the tasks uh, place in Adaptix, which basically shows you all of the tasks that you have run on your beacon, which is quite nice for reporting, especially you can probably generate a timeline there and then put that straight into your report, which is quite helpful. Okay, so something cool that Adaptix also has is a file browser. So you just need to click the reload button when you move to that tab so that it can send it to the agent. So as you can see now, we can browse Clint's file system pretty much like a normal file system you would do on, on Windows. So you can just click around, go to his app data, go to his downloads, wherever you wanna go. It makes exfiltrating data a lot better and makes browsing files and and systems like that a lot easier as well, I think. So it's also quite nice. I think the UI is also really nice. So big up to Hacker Ralph for designing that. Um, so yeah, and now we can go to the process browser as well. So you can see all the processes that you could maybe inject. And also don't forget you need to reload it as well before you can see it interactively properly. Cool, so there it is. So you got SVC host, LSAS, all of that good stuff there. So this will be where you could migrate to processes or inject processes for privilege escalation and all that sort of thing. Obviously the processes are protected so you would have to you know, unhook there and that sort of thing, but uh, that's not for this video. Cool, so this is the process browser and now we're back to the beacon. 
So I'm just going to run a help command quickly. And then you can, to, to get more information on the commands, you can run help and then the command. And then as you can see, it will print out the text about how the command is used, which is really helpful. So now we're going to go to the GitHub extension kit, which is where all of the beacon object files for Adaptex are now that uh, Hacker Ralph and the boys over there made for, for the launch of the Adaptex framework. But I'm sure you can go build your own one as well because nothing, nothing's stopping you from building that. But as you can see, there's quite a lot of BOF files. So you have AD, creds, BOF, elevation, BOF, execution, BOF, injection, Kerberos, 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 BOF, whatever you want to call it. So to install it, you obviously need to clone the repo. And as you can see, there's some nice documentation there on the GitHub. So you see I've run the op command and the command isn't found because we need to load in these beacon object files. So I went and downloaded them and quickly going to navigate to them. So in my Adaptex C2 folder and in the extension kit, you'll see there's a JSON file there. So the JSON file is the one you need to, to load in. So a little thing that I would suggest to the developers of Adaptix is to make batch loading of the beacon object files available. So maybe in version 0 0.5, that could be a thing because I couldn't figure out how to do more than one uh, beacon object file at once. So as you can see, I'm going to go into each folder and then click on the JSON and load it like that. So I'm not going to bore you guys with that. So I'm going to skip ahead. As you can see, I've loaded in all of the beacon object files now and they're all enabled. The status is enabled. So I'm just going to close that and run the arp command now. I'm still going to get an error because I haven't compiled them yet. So the beacon object files are pretty much C files that you need to compile before you can run them because you need the .o file from, from making them. So to do that, we're going to go into the directory that we want and then just run make. And as you can see, it's going to create a bin and then up CACLS, all that good stuff. And now we're back in Adaptix and we're going to run a command from one of these beacon object files. So as you can see, I'm running the op command to print out the op table and the who am I command, but our beacon seems to have died. So I'm gonna go back to Clint's machine and just run it again for demonstration purposes. So now in a fresh beacon, we're gonna run the op command. So BOF implementation op, and as you can see, it prints out the op table. So now we know our beacon object file is running. And then the who am I command also prints out who am I forward slash all, so we can get all of that good information for Clint. So as you can see, Clint is just a regular use domain user there. Well, he's not actually a domain user because he hasn't been joined to the domain yet. So he's just a regular local user. But look at all of these commands now that you can do on Adaptix when you've loaded in all of those extensions and those beacon object files. So it really is quite malleable in that sense and very expandable and extendable. So where do we stand? Is Adaptix really the free and equivalent alternative to the famous C2 Cobalt Strike? In many ways, yes. It offers a very comparable experience, team operations, and a rich feature set, all without costing a dime. And a big kudos to Hacker Rolf and all contributors for building this tool and sharing it with everyone. It is innovations like this that push our tradecraft forward. We hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, leave a like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.